Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and we have Richu in the building. Today we're going to talk about subscribing to white culture. Cue the intro. both a little anxious about this topic um, if you guys saw my live we did a poll on which topic people wanted us to talk about and it was on um, the first one was like hereditary right like yeah DNA test DNA test we, we asked subscribe to white culture it was the last one weed weed yeah <laughs> and so that live went really well I, um, so this was the, the question at one point. I think it was like the highest. Um, I definitely still want to do the DNA test. Yeah, I feel like that I would be really DNA, dope. I'm so all about that. And I definitely want to talk about weed with someone that's willing to talk about it openly and not after January 1st because I got some messages about that. They're like, <laughs> I'm cool with talking about it after January 1st. But anyway, we want to go right into it. Um, and I think the, the whole like topic of subscribing to white culture is just a little sensitive. But my whole purpose of this show is just to keep it real. Like, let's just talk about real shit. So, um, yeah, so why was this something that you felt like was important for us to just kind of address? Yeah, so I think that a lot of South Asian Americans, which is a lot of the people that are watching this show. Yeah, um, shout out, shout out, love you guys. Shout out to the mothers out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do subscribe to white culture because it's an image of, you know, what success looks like and yeah. what, you're, what you're supposed to be doing. But, you know, we like to keep it real on this show and part of that is staying true to yourself and turning on push notifications for who you really are and not subscribing to something else. So. We thought we'd talk about that a little bit more openly and share our topic, our, our thought around it. Yeah, I think what it is is, well, I think when you think about Indian, and even in India, right? Like the standard of beauty, this is, is like this Eurocentric look, right? Mm -hmm. And then when our parents and our grandparents came to this country, you know, what was success to them was what they saw, you know, on TV, like, what basically it was white people like doing doing big things and um i guess what what we're we're trying and i think it's also changed like over time right so i think as people are you know coming into themselves and like figuring out who they are they've been able to kind of define what success is by right. just like being themselves and not thinking like okay i gotta be like straight hair gotta like follow like what white people think right. is success and are just you know paving their own path right exactly i think there's definitely more modes of success in today's day and age than there was maybe when you know even when we were growing up so yeah there's way more to life than being somebody else you gotta stick true to who you are and mm -hmm. what you believe in and what um authenticity looks like to you yeah i was thinking about like my dad telling me we shouldn't wear like indian clothes to american church mm. and i was i mean no shots at my dad i don't think my dad watches my videos <laughs> regularly anyway but like I was like, Dad, like, what does it matter? And it's so funny because I was like that younger. When I was younger, I was like, no, you don't do that in American right. church, right? Like, we're in America. And it's like that same idea, like, you hear people saying, like, you're in America, speak English. Yeah. And I probably felt like that, too. And it was because of, like, what I was told and what I was, like, what we were, like, you know, America is like English, America is burgers and hot dogs. Yeah. And we were like, oh yeah, that's what I want. But then as we get older and we're like embracing our culture and realizing like the beauty of it and how important it is for us to maintain it because if we're all gonna go do like what America is, then we're not gonna be as vibrant right. of a culture, of, of a country. Um, and like, I think it's important for us to do these things that make us unique and like embrace these traditions because that's what's beautiful about America. Right, exactly, 100%. So what I can speak to is that I grew up in Chicagoland with, you know, all of my family members always around me and having that, you know, brown identity was big a big part of who I was. And then I moved to Muncie, Indiana. I know that is. 
It's it's in Indiana. It's small, and I love. I went to school at Ball State, and okay. I love my university. Um, but there were very a small amount of brown people there, and I re I did have to subscribe to white culture, and um, it was tough because I felt out of place a little bit. Yeah. Um, but coming home was really important to me. Yeah. And finding people that I could be 100% authentic with was important to me, and getting those that rhetoric like, oh, that's not really the standard, you know, your family set up is kind of not the standard of what America is or um, your your way of life is a little bit different. Having those conversations was, I think, good. And yeah. I think I had a safe space for that. Yeah. But it was definitely interesting and I would not say I'm an expert on subscribing to white culture, but I got a good, I got a good lesson. And all I can say is life is unseasoned, but it's happening. <laughs> I think what it is is like you if you were super different right you yeah. would stand out right? right and I think what it is is it's I, all about assimilation, assimilation. like when you're yeah. an immigrant you're like keep your head down mind your business uh, try not to create too much attention around what you're doing right. and just get it go done. With, go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, go with the flow. Do what you need to do. Be who you need to be to get to the finish line. Right. And yeah, that's been, I think, maybe uh, a negative pressure on a lot of us, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're an immigrant. Like, you want to be who you want, who you are in life. And yeah. if you're subscribing to white culture and, you know, saying that this is the image of success and it's probably unattainable for me because of who I am, right? it's probably creating negative pressures for you. Yeah, in regards to like assimilation, so I feel like we all kind of have like our different faces, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, how I am at work when I worked at like a corporate job and then when I'm with my parents and my family mm -hmm. and I think some of that is also just like you talk about different things you act differently mm -hmm. but then also just you know when I'm at work I'm like more of like that corporate American vibe right yeah. and you feel like you have to put on this different face right um but then when I'm at home I'm like my real who I really am, or like, you know. Everybody, I think everybody does that. Yeah, everyone like, does I that. I gotta act professional at work, but yeah. at home, you know, you're gonna get the ratchet, so. <laughs> right, but I think well, that's actually been something that I've been thinking about more this year because I am in a different kind of career setting or whatnot. It's just like being who I really am all the time. Right, me too, definitely for me as well. Um, <clears throat> I Like I said, I went to school in Muncie, Indiana, and my family came to visit once. I think junior year mm -hmm. and um, people had already known me I've been there for three years and they'd come to visit and the way I was speaking to my family and how I was interacting with them was very different than how I'd been there for three years yeah and I had no recollection of this my best friend pointed out she's like why are you talking like that like why all of a sudden do you have this accent and I was like I have no idea what you're talking about. She's right. like, yeah, you're a completely different pe person with, you know, your family here. Yeah. It was my brothers. <clears throat> they came to visit and, you know, we're using, we're from Chicago. We're using slang. We're talking about things Chicagoans talk about and um, doing normal, you know, hood rat stuff. And they, she was like, this is a new you. And that was, that was, it bonded me and her a lot because she was like, you should act like that all the time. Like you shouldn't feel like because you're in Muncie that you need to act or be a certain way. Yeah. And I think from there I've grown a lot because you know, I'm not a coconut, I'm a brown kid and I'm wanting to be my authentic self. Even in my own workplace, I try to just be real with who I am. Yeah, and talk about things, right? Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I would just be like, nobody wants to hear about things that are going on in my life because it's just so different or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important. Or you won't get it. Yeah, you, you won't just get, won't get what's Just happening. explain it. Who cares? Yeah, yeah people want to learn. Um, but I don't think white people have to feel like that kind of pressure of, you know, hiding or not sharing as much or um, being who they truly are mm -hmm. because I think their parents probably encourage them to do that all the time. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> my parents were like, don't share. Just go to school and come home. Probably, you should probably not talk to anybody for <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. They're like, you know, they're like, definitely assimilate. Um, yeah. We're here to, we're, we decide to come here, so we need to figure out, you know, what the best mode of 
um, navigating this new world is like yeah that's our that's our that's our task for right now so it was definitely a project yeah and um, I think what was fed to us was more you got to do this you got to be this you this is who you need to be to survive around here this but, is these are all the steps to take yeah. to be successful and just go with the flow and um, you know you don't want to stand out don't like stand out. although like everyone knows when we walk in a room that we're not yeah i don't white. know that's a big thing why okay don't stand out but go everywhere in a sari <laughs> not even but like you can't you have brown skin when, yeah you're gonna stand out yeah oh you're gonna stand gosh. out no matter what so just to be that person exactly um i think what we're trying to tell you is that you don't need to have those that checklist just be your authentic self and what will happen will happen and your authentic self will bring you to where you need to be in life so tim wise is an activist and author in america and he talks about he wrote a book called white like me and he talks about an analogy where he describes white culture as a pool of fish and if you point out to the pool of fish that hey you're uh, in water, the fish are not going to know what you're talking about, but it is a conduit for which the fish live their life. Similarly to that effect, um, you know, white culture and subscribing to white culture, the fish being, being white America, yeah. they're living in that sphere of influence and they're not going to know what you're talking about when you point out privilege or white culture to them. Um, because that's all they know. Right. So yeah. as us, you know, we have to... Um, to be part of that world get Be able to live in that environment. So mm -hmm. we got to get our scuba gear. We got to Pay for scuba lessons your education. We have to do all these things to change who we are Yeah, or what we look like to be in that world. Yeah, but there is a life above water that mm -hmm. you know We're thriving in yeah, and we're building a platform in and we're doing things in so it's it's not like you have to be underwater all the time you yeah can be above water. right and i think we're just juggling these different identities and i think it's a it's a forever journey of figuring out what these different ident who, who these different identities are and how we identify ourselves um but i think it's important to recognize that those things don't need to divide us it's just you know we're all very unique beings and um we have different identities and um we just need to embrace them and right. just and share them because people want to learn about them yeah, and people definitely. want to get to know you and really get to know who you are right exactly and that's um totally in line with what we're doing in creatures of the sun yeah trying to create uniqueness but also um you know have a vibrant life you all just want to share who you are and there should be modes of expressing yourself i think we've we've had the privilege i mean like my parents knew a little bit of english like not everyone mm -hmm. has that privilege um and then i was just thinking about how like i've had conversations with some people and <clears throat> they're like do they have like sandwiches in india and i was like no and I'm like oh i thought like they had sandwiches everywhere and so i think like sometimes white people or people in america that don't have a lot of exposure to different cultures are just think like america is the norm yeah right like what is normal is is american yeah that's the standard and i hear that a lot like um Recently, I was explaining to a friend my family structure, and I was calling my um, cousins' kids, kids, my nieces, and my nephews. And yeah, they were so confused because they thought, you know, we thought the story was about your cousin, but yeah. now it's about your brother. Right. What's going on? And I'm right. like, the, no, that's that's how I refer to my family, and they're like, yeah. well, that's not the standard. Right, no that's one, not right. Yeah, I've that's, been not, told that's right. not right. Yeah, that's not yeah. right. How you're explaining it is not right. That's why everyone here is confused. And I was like, I understand that, but you know, I'm not gonna start calling them my, my second cousins. cousin or I, my cousin. Second I wouldn't removed. know what they are. Yeah, they're too close and personal for me. To, yeah, I can't. You know, I was like, that's like a. I'm removing them from me, from myself in a relationship wise. Right. It's so weird for me to be calling them a second cousin or... When it's like your yeah, niece. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, that's a good example of explaining like what this, what this is, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we're told that what we know is wrong and then sometimes like if you're hearing that as a young age yeah you, you believe it yeah like wearing indian clothes speaking our language in public like 
bringing Indian food to lunch. I mean, my parents didn't do that, but yeah. like I've heard of people doing that and being so embarrassed. Right. Right. Or smelling like Indian food. Like I still don't really typically like smelling like Indian. Yeah, food. nobody does. <laughs> But it smells good, right? Yeah, it smells good. There's still a negative connotation for it. We just started having an opinion like four years ago. All of those like um, skin deep like wounds about our culture and what we had to go through as a kid to make it in this community. Right. It's still gonna be there. Like maybe our maybe like three generations from now they're gonna be like, oh, everybody loves Indian food. I love right. smelling Indian. They're gonna have perfume about it. <laughs> It's Indian a, perfume. It's not today. Jim Curry, bloody Jim Curry. That is not today. That's not where but, we're living like, in today. Every Indian kid probably got like made fun of for smelling like Indian food or like curry jokes or some stupid, yeah, yeah, stupid yeah. thing that had to do with like Indian smells. Right. And my mom one time she had like a catering business and she made all this Indian food like biryani, and um, I stepped out and I was like. That was a lot of cooking. I wonder if I smell like Indian food. And I went to my neighbor and I was like, dude, he's brown. He's like, do I smell like Indian food? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to school today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you're like so embarrassed. Yeah, I'm like, right. oh, I don't know how to get this out. Like this is like on th the third level of my skin, I bet. Yes, yeah. this, <laughs> this penetrated <laughs> my being. My mom had a whole like, you know, cooking show in her our kitchen. She was she was making that dough though, so I ain't mad. <laughs> and then also accents. Like I feel like I was embarrassed that my parents had an accent. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. then even like now, like when when people come to America, they're trying to get rid of their accent. Right. And I think it's so dope. Like when people have accents, like you like you're like when you I, when I got into my lift yesterday, you could hear like he had a Jamaican accent, but I like waited a little bit to like ask him where he was from. But that's what's so cool about America and like we have so many different people here and we need to embrace it instead of being like, yo, let's all be American. Like American to me means like this- A melting pot. Yeah, yeah, this beautiful, like colorful place that everyone can just like be. Mm -hmm. um, but I I guess like our the purpose of this video is to encourage you to just be yourself, like be who you are. Um, like Rich is wearing her like, Dope ass Indian uh, shirt, like her brand, Creatures of the Sun. Tell yep. us a little bit about that. So, Creatures of the Sun is a brand, it's an apparel brand um, started by me and my friend Mince. And we make apparel for minority cultures, specifically Malayalis, because we are Malayali. And this is something that we can use to be our authentic self. We want everybody that lives under the sun to be um, celebrating their oneness. Yeah. Because there are more things that tie us together than create separation and we just need to be authentic and share on who we are yeah. and I think there's more acceptance out there than there is negative. Yeah and I think about like how many more Indian restaurants are out there, yeah. how many more like it just it's become like more <laughs> of the norm and it's super it's, it's great yeah um, but like I think it's important to recognize what has been yeah and that definitely is rooted in in us and I think it's just being aware of it and you know making the changes that you want to make and like even for me I feel like I've been been more into like embracing Indian fashion and my like everyday wear and it's just so funny like when I was a teenager I was like I'm not wearing Indian clothes yeah. like I'm American like, <laughs> like and so um yeah I think it's it's just important to just you know just have a conversation just think about like what your life has looked like when you were a kid and like how um, you know, how has like this pressure of being American has maybe like m molded you and how you can make it, how you can just be yourself. Right. So my story is a little bit different in that I was born in Kerala and yeah. I came here when I was pretty young. Um, but it was just always been a struggle on like who I was the and how, how do yeah. I portray who I really am because yeah. this is what I'm supposed to be doing here, you know, I don't have an accent anymore. Yeah. There's a, like a, a long list of things that are different about me. Yeah. Um, if I'd been... Lived there longer, yeah. Lived yeah. There longer or anything like that. So I've been kind of more open about my experience on that and mm -hmm. what I really think. There's definitely been a change between when I decided to become a actual citizen versus 
uh, before and after that, there's a different shift in who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely thought like if I was American that I had to subscribe to this and be this and I can only be this. But um, when I decided to become a citizen, I was like, I can be whoever I want to be. And yeah. this is, I can call this home because this is, that's what America really is. Yeah. And um, also recognizing your privilege of being in this country is huge. Yeah. I was just, my Lyft driver yesterday, he was really dope. He was talking about how like, there's so many opportunities here. And if you've only known America, you've never gone anywhere else, you will not even realize how many opportunities you have. Like you can start a business so easily. You can like find jobs. You can, I mean, obviously like schooling is expensive but there's ways to make it happen mm -hmm. and um, really recognizing that you have like a huge privilege of being here we're, we're we have a huge privilege of being Indian American right. exactly. um, our parents you know our parents choosing to come here um, taking the risk making yeah. the move that's huge right having the the resources to have education um, yeah and I think I, I guess like for for me like the super the 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 huge what I want people to take from this is just be yourself. And um, because who you are is good enough. And I feel like, I honestly watch my videos sometimes just to like, when I feel like shit, to like remind myself of like how dope I am. Yeah, that you're the shit. Yeah, cause you're the shit. Like you- You are the shit. You are so amazing. And I know that like there's only one of you and nobody else can do you as good as you can. So you don't want to blend in. I, I don't, don't want I don't want to blend in. I want to be myself. I want to be vibrant. I want people to be like, "Oh, that's Shireen." Yeah. And so I I think really think about like how that can what that looks like for you. Exactly. I think if someone says, "Oh, that's Shireen. That's how she is." That means a lot. You yeah. have your own brand. Right. You're being your authentic self. Every single person has their own brand. Exactly. You like, just need to you just need to be comfortable with sharing that and sharing who you really are because people are waiting for you to start talking about yeah. yourself in in that way. You know, they want to get to know you. They don't want the surface level. Yeah, and like people I people want you to shine. Exactly. And like I want everyone that watches this video to recognize that you have so much power and just being who you are and like shining and we there's enough room there's enough money there's enough of everything out here for you to just shine as bright as possible and right. just like be yourself yeah i think people live in this life of scarcity of oh well <clears throat> i would do that if i had this or i would do that if i had that but you just gotta. live you got everything you need because you have the mindset for it. Yeah. And if you're living in a mindset of scarcity, that's the box you're gonna be putting yourself into. So just go out there and do what you wanna do, be who you are, and don't let anybody tell you different. Yeah, no, don't, just because things have been done a certain way mm -hmm. and you have been a certain way for all this time does not matter, be you. Be you. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> That. I feel good about it too. Yes. All right. Thank you guys so much for Thank watching. You Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. All the way up here. Yeah. It was a it was a long <laughs> journey. <laughs> you can come here and join me. Um, we, we shoot in my house, y'all. Yeah. Um, we and... have a crib. This is a dope crib. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just want to hear people's thoughts. I want to talk to people. I just I love having conversations. So please join me. And yeah, make sure you subscribe, like this video, comment, do all the things. Bye.